Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through activity 5-4 titled Configuring Routing. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA Guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Administration in preparation of exam 70-411. In my edition of the book, this activity begins at the top of page 190. Um, so routing is a part of the routing and remote access roles that are available on Windows servers. In a previous video, we went through and configured and tested a VPN connection. Um, if you were following along for that and still have that active and configured, the first thing you want to do is right-click your node here for the server and disable routing and remote access. This will purge out and remove that configuration. Um, go ahead and pause the video if you need to do that. That will take your system a few minutes probably to process. Um, once you're ready, go ahead and unpause and we'll go into configuring routing. Um, so to begin, we will select the top option here that's available, and we'll start wor working our way through the wizard. Um, we're going to select a custom configuration, and we're going to select LAN routing. When it prompts, we want to tell it to start the service. Once it's completed, we want to open the IPv4 node. Um, if you get an error trying to open that node and the console crashes, um, go ahead and let it close completely and open a new console. Um, the second time you open it, it should not have any problems. Um, we saw here, I didn't have any issues, I didn't get any warnings or anything. Um, so once, you're, once you have the IPv4 node expanded, select Static Routes. We can see we don't have anything built up yet, so we're going to create some static routes. Actually, before we begin that, let's take a look at the current IP routing table. Um, and so these are the routes that the server knows about automatically because these are the networks it's directly connected to. Um, so obviously 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, then we have our 10, 11, 1 network, which is the primary domain area um, for most of this course. Um, 127 is our loopback, and then 203.0.113. This is part of our internet emulation. Um, it's not actually connected to the internet, but that simulates a net, an internet connection. Um, 224 through 240, that is usually a multicast range, and then we have the top broadcast. And so that's what it knows about just automatically without any additional configuration. So we want to go ahead and add a new static route, because we saw that it had 203.0.113. We want to add 203.0.114. With the same subnet mask, I'm using a class C. And the gateway will still be the 203.0.113. Um, now that we have that set, we're going to go ahead and have it show the routing table again. We see we still have the 203.0.113, and now we have the 114 as well um, going out the gateway for our 113 network. Alright, so next we want to actually enable some routing protocols. Um, underneath our IPv4 node here, we want to select General. And if we right click on it, we can set a new routing protocol. So let's do that. We want to select our IP version 2 or RIP v2. Um, by default, no interfaces are enabled for RIP. We'll need to go and do that manually. Um, so we'll right click on the RIP node and we'll select new interface. Um, we can select either. We'll go ahead and select our top one. Um, you may only have one depending on your environment. 
here we can change settings for the routing protocol. Um, for this activity, and for this video, I'm going to leave everything at the defaults. And then we can right click the RIP node again and select Show Neighbors. Um, because my other machines are offline right now, it's not going to pick up any neighbors. We'll get that booted and see if it'll come up quickly enough to keep this video short. Um, if you had any other routers on the network, then the routers themselves would show up here. Um, this server does not actually have any routing protocols or anything, so I don't think it'll show up anyways. But if you have routers in your network environment, then those routers would be indicated here as neighbors. Um, it looks like that pretty much covers the configuration side of the activity. Um, you could also go and configure network address translation in here. Um, there is one image that I thought was really helpful for NAT. Um, if you're not familiar with how, with how NAT works, this can kind of help explain a little bit of it. Um, so you have your internet side with a public IP address. And then obviously you have your private network over here. Um, so, for example, our, our server has 10.11.1.2 as its private IP address, but then it has a separate interface directly connected to the Internet with that public address. And what NAT does is it allows a machine out here on the Internet or a remote network. So we have our little machine out here at home or whatever the case may be. Forgive my terrible drawing. Throw a little keyboard on there, and we'll go ahead and give it a mouse too. So this is like your home PC. So your home PC will address um, this IP address for remote access, but it'll use a port number. And with the N NAT configured inside of the server here, that port number will become translated to one of the actual physical machines on the network. Um, as it shows here, we have the public address at port 3544, which ends up becoming 151. Um, it looks like that pretty much covers everything and a little bit extra. So, if, as always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.